entire triangle of the neck. Now when we talk about the triangles of the neck, the neck is being divided into two triangles and it is, it is in relation with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. We will just draw a schematic diagram to explain it. If this is the lateral aspect of the neck, over here this is the clavicle, sternum, the cut section of the sternum, then we have the mastoid process over here. Now there is a muscle which extends from the manubrium sterni and clavicle and it is going till the mastoid process. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and this sternocleidomastoid muscle it is dividing the whole lateral aspect of the neck into two triangles. One is the anterior triangle over here. This is the anterior triangle with the apex pointing downwards and the base on the upper side. This is anterior triangle. <coughs> and the one which is present posterior to the sternocleidomastoid, this is the posterior triangle. After knowing this division, there are further subdivisions of the anterior triangle. So now if you come to the anterior triangle over here, the further subdivisions of the anterior triangle, for that we need to know the various muscles which help in this further subdivision. Now in the center uh, or we can say in the midline of the neck, we have the hyoid bone over here which is at the junction of the floor and the anti aspect of the neck. Now there is a muscle which is present in the V-shaped manner like this and this muscle is the digastric muscle having two bellies. The anterior belly, the anterior belly is attached over here as we can see it is attached towards the digastric fossas which are just present beneath the chin of the mandible and we have the posterior belly which is attached to the medial aspect of this mastoid process specifically to the digastric notch. Over here they have this intermediate tendon and this intermediate tendon it is this intermediate tendon over here it is suspended by the uh, a fibrocartilaginous pulley which is pre uh, a fibrous pulley which is present over here and which is attached to the hyoid bone. So this is the anterior belly of digastric. And this is the posterior belly of digastric. The posterior belly of the digastric muscle. Now another muscle which is present over here which help in the subdivision is the omohoid muscle. It is having a superior belly and the inferior belly. The inferior belly it takes origin from the superior border of the scapula of the scapula and it is coming from the posterior aspect and it runs upwards. When it is running upward over here it is present in the posterior triangle. This is the inferior belly of omohoid. Then it forms an intermediate tendon which is lying deep to the sternocleidomastoid and further it continues as the superior belly. This is the superior belly of omohyoid which is attached to the inferior margin of the hyoid bone. So this is the superior belly of omohyoid. the superior belly of omohoid and this was the inferior belly of omohoid. Now when we, now if we come towards the anterior triangle we can very well see this anterior and the posterior belly of digastric as well as the superior belly of the omohoid it has divided this anterior triangle into further subdivisions. Now we will just name those subdivisions. We can see one triangle over here 
this triangle it is bounded on either side by the anterior and the posterior belly of digastric and the base is formed by the mandible. The base which is formed over here is by the lower border of the mandible till the angle of mandible and then we draw an imaginary line which is extended backwards. This triangle is digastric triangle. This is the digastric triangle. Now if we see towards the anterior side over here, there is a triangle over here. Now this triangle, this is the submental triangle. This is a submental triangle because it is just present below the chin. It is named as such and if you see it is half triangle which can be seen on the lateral side, another half is seen towards the another side. And this is formed between the two anterior belly of digastric which is uh, going like this and the base is formed by the hyoid bone. So for the submental triangle, it is lying between the anterior belly of digastric, the right and left anterior belly of digastric and we can say on the lateral lateral side it is formed by this anterior belly of digastric and the base is formed by the hyoid bone. For the digastric we have already mentioned anterior and posterior belly of digastric. In this we can see it on the anterior side anterior belly towards the posterior side posterior belly and the base is by the lower border of mandible. So this lower border of mandible, it contributes into the base of this triangle. Now after this we come to the lower side, we can see another triangle which is present over here. This triangle is given the term as submental, uh, this is given the term as muscular triangle. This is a given the term as muscular triangle. Now if we see the boundaries of this muscular triangle, on one side it is bounded by the superior belly of omohyoid, on another side it is bounded by this anterior border of sternocleidomastoid and over here it is having, we can say an imaginary midline is there, so midline of the neck. So if we see the boundaries of this muscular triangle, it is bounded by superior belly of omohyoid. The superior belly of omohyoid is present towards the superior side. On the inferior side, we have sternocleidomastoid muscle, the anterior border of this muscle and anterior midline of the neck. It is on the anterior side and we say the base is formed by this anterior midline of the neck. So these are the structures forming the boundaries of muscular triangle. Now we are left with a major triangle of this and uh, of this side and that is the carotid triangle. Now this is the carotid triangle which is formed over here. Now if you see the boundaries of this carotid triangle, on one side it is formed by posterior belly of digastric, on another side it is formed by superior belly of omohoid and the base is formed by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle. So if you just write the boundaries of the carotid triangle, for the carotid triangle, on the upper and towards the anterior side, so we can say anterior superiorly, the boundary is being formed by posterior belly of digastric. Then anterior inferiorly, it is being formed by the superior belly of omohyoid. And towards the posterior side or the posterior boundary or we can say the base of this triangle is formed by anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. its anterior border.
So here by the, this shows all the divisions of the anterior triangle and we can see the anterior triangle is further divided into four triangles. So it is subdivided into four triangles and when we say that how many triangles can be visualized on the lateral side, we say that only three and a half triangles are visualized from the lateral aspect because the submental triangle which is present like this, it is present over here and only half of this is visible from the lateral side. So this is regarding the subdivisions of the anterior triangle. 